Are online courses dead? That's literally what some people say, that the age of the online course is over. We are in a saturated market. Everyone's got an online course. You can't sell online courses anymore. Uh, or if you are, we're at the end of an era and we need to come up with something new. Let me tell you, online courses are not dead. <laughs> and not only are they not dead, they're not even dying. They're just getting started. And so what I want to do in today's episode is walk you through the five reasons why online courses are here to stay, my friend. They aren't going anywhere anytime soon. And on top of that, after we go through these five reasons, which I think are going to be really helpful for you to understand why they're effective and will continue to be effective for decades, I'm going to share with you the three things that your course needs to be able to sell in today's market because it is a different market than when I got started in 2009. I'll give you that. There are some changes. There are some things to consider. I'm going to unpack those things as well, but online courses aren't going anywhere, my friend. So buckle up, sit back, relax. Let's unpack the power of online courses, why they're here to stay and how to sell them in today's market. Welcome back to The Graham Cochran Show, where each week I'm helping you unpack the mindsets, habits, and strategies to build a highly profitable and life-giving business. I'm your host, Graham Cochran. Good to see you. I hope you're doing well today. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, consider leaving me a review. Um, so many of you have graciously rated the show and left a review, uh, so much so that if I haven't already mentioned this, uh, you've made this show a top 0.5% rated podcast globally, meaning out of all the podcasts in the world, uh, in all industries, in all niches, in all genres, um, this show is in the top one half of 1% of all podcasts. And I am super honored and grateful um, for that to even be possible. And it's because not only the number of downloads, meaning you guys are downloading the show if you listen on Apple Podcasts, but you are leaving reviews and rating it, which is part of how they rank it. So if you're listening to the audio version, um, or if even if you aren't, if you're watching on YouTube, just go over to the audio version on the Apple Podcasts app or your podcast app of choice, and would you leave a review and rate it? It really does help, and it's a huge uh, honor, uh, and it helps people like other guests look at my show and say, yeah, I want to go on Graham's show. It's ranked really high. It's a top-ranked podcast. It's pretty legit. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And those of you watching on YouTube, you know I love you. I love YouTube. I love that we can interact here. So please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave comments specifically letting me know what you like, what you don't like, what questions you have. This helps me know what kind of content to continue to produce for you. And uh, we got a lot of good stuff coming. I'm so excited about next year, by the way. Um, 2024, if you're watching this in 2023 or listening to this, is going to be fire for this channel and this show. Um, I've got so much good stuff I want to bring you. I'm going to help take you, your business, and your life to the next level um, as I start to unpack and teach some of the content in my new book, Rebel, Find Yourself by Not Following the Crowd, which is coming out <clears throat> in 2024. So stay tuned for that. I'm excited. I uh, uh, wasn't planning on talking about that, but here we are. Let's talk about online courses. Um, if you've read my, my first book, How to Get Paid for What You Know, um, or taken my course, Automatic Income Academy, then you know that the foundation of the business model that I teach um, in terms of your first paid offer is a standalone online video course. And I'm not unique in this. Plenty of other incredible people teach that you should have an online course. Um, and it's a model that's worked so well for me for coming up in 14 years now. Actually, it's 14 years. I'm looking at the calendar. The day I'm recording this, we just crossed the 14-year mark of me being in business online. Uh, I launched my very first blog, The Recording Revolution, in October of 2009, which is wild. Um, but online courses have been, the, it was the first product they ever built, and they've been the foundation of both of my businesses here. There is chatter that the world of online courses is over. Or if it's not over yet, it's dying. And that we're just in a different era. And I don't know exactly what era they think we're in. Um, but with the, the, the powerful tools that have evolved that allow us to do live video and live interaction and power, building powerful communities. I mean, it's, there's so many cool interactive things we can 
offer our students and clients today that are so much easier to pull off than they were 14 years ago. I've been running communities since 2012, um, but back then it was like you had to install forum software onto your, your WordPress site, and it was clunky, and it looked like 1997. Um, and so... We've come a long way from that, but I've been doing community for over a decade, um, paid communities, and, the, and they're phenomenal. And I don't disagree that we have a much more interactive world um, where we can interact with our students in unique ways. But there's chatter that the, the world of selling an online course is over. Um, I hear, and I don't know what you've heard, I hear because they say the market for courses is saturated. Everybody's got a course, there's a million courses, there's just too many courses. And, and that's just a classic example of when there's a lot of something people say, you know, it's over. Like, it, we've already hit critical mass. I still don't think we've hit critical mass. I still find people that are shocked that there's even a thing you can create called an online course. Uh, I, think, I still think we're at the beginning or the front of a massive multi-decade wave of online education. And the, the video course is going to be the hub of that, as we'll get to in a minute. Um, so people say it's overly saturated. People say that courses aren't effective and that ain't true. I mean, there's bad courses out there, but a course is only as effective as the, as much as the person who bought the course participates in the course. So I'll give you that the data says that most people don't watch your entire course. It's the same as books, okay? Most people statistically, the, the, the median American Averages skew it because there's crazy people like me that read a ton of books and, and Ty Lopez who reads a book a day, <laughs> according to his TED Talk. Um, outside of those outliers, the median American reads four books a year, which is pathetic. 90 days to read a freaking book. No wonder we're not getting ahead in our lives. I'm gonna do a whole episode on reading books, but the median American reads four books a year. But the data also shows us, and I don't know what they mean by read four books, like, they're, I don't think they're actually reading a book because there's other data that tells us that the typical person who buys a book and reads a book doesn't read past chapter two, which is depressing for someone like me who's an author and got a brand new book that I pour my blood, sweat, and tears into. Um, but it also allows me to be strategic. I, like, front load my books. <laughs> Chapters one and two are juicy as it all get out because uh, I got to convince you early on this book can change your life. I got to give you something good at the beginning. So you're like, wow, I, I like to write so much good stuff in the first two chapters of my books that like you can, you can quote me in those first two chapters and, and feel smart and feel like you read the book, even though you haven't read the book. But I know that most people don't read past chapter two. Does that mean the author shouldn't write books? That'd be the, the logic of saying online courses are saturated and nobody finishes them. So they're not effective. If you applied that logic to books, we'd have no authors. Well, the book market is saturated. There's quite a lot of books out there. Yeah, they've been writing books for thousands of years. Technically printing them for 500 years since the Gutenberg's printing press. But you know what I'm saying? The Bible has been around for thousands of years and a lot of ancient books as well. Uh, I would say the book market is the most saturated market. Way more books than there are courses. Does that mean we shouldn't write books? No. Uh, people don't read books. They don't read past chapter two, even if they bought the book. Does that mean we shouldn't write books? No. You write books if you're an author because there are people out there that will pick them up and read them and it'll change their lives. You make a course because there's people out there that'll buy it and actually watch it and apply it. And it'll change their lives. These are like dumb reasons to say that online courses are ineffective. It's not the course's fault, although there are some bad courses, but it's, it's just, this is human nature. We buy things that we tend to look at or use just like we buy exercise equipment that we intend to use, but we don't. It's the same with courses. We buy courses that we don't end up using. That's just human nature. That's not a product of the course itself being bad. It's just human nature. And then, you know, there's, there's the other argument, which is, well, YouTube has just got so much free content. No one's going to buy your course, which I, we dispelled that in my book at the very beginning. Look, YouTube videos are not the same thing as an online course. People only pay attention when they pay. So when they watch a YouTube video, even like this, and I have to live with this, is like, this is going to be a super valuable, valuable video if you're watching it, but most people aren't going to pay attention because they didn't pay for this. It was free. Also, my content is amazing, but it's disparate and it's just, you know, chopped up and it's over, uh, you know, hundreds of videos and it's over years and years and years. Most people aren't going to aggregate all that data together and that content together and then act on it, right? Whereas a course is all together. It's, it's unified. It's, it's logical. It's a roadmap for people. Um, 
And the, the, the irony is the more content that's made on YouTube, the more likely courses will sell because it's so overwhelming getting on YouTube or getting on the internet or being on Reddit and getting lost with all these opinions that you need someone who's curated and organized all the information, eliminated the stuff you don't need, and given you the step-by-step -step process to like do this, you'll get this result. That's what makes online courses powerful. So in the land of tons of online content that's free, it's actually easier to sell an online course and it's more effective to have an online course than ever before. So it's actually the opposite. That's not the point of this episode. That's just sort of like giving you some context of what I'm hearing and, and how off they are. But let me give you the five reasons why online courses are here to stay. And then like I said at the top of the episode, after I unpack those really quickly, I'm gonna give you the three things that your course needs, must have in order for you to sell it in today's market. Because I will give you, it is more crowded than it was in 2009 when I got started. Technically, my first course launched in early 2010. So, you know, it's been 13, 14 years since I started selling courses. It's way more crowded than it was back then. And it's a different landscape than it was back then. So I'm gonna give you the three things that are necessary for you to sell in today's market. But first, five reasons why online courses are here to stay. Number one, people understand the format, finally. Do you know how hard it was to sell an online course in 2010? It would actually have made more sense to say you can't sell a course in 2010 than it is to say you can't sell a course in 2024. You kidding me? It is way easier to sell an online course today than, than back in 2010. And I'm not even talking about the technology. Thank you, Kajabi, right? I'm not even talking about ease of use for you, the, co the course creator. I was filming videos. I was uploading them to a zip file on a, on a server uh, on GoDaddy and then using a PayPal button and, and hoping that the PayPal button linked to the, the zip file on the server uh, and then my server shut me down because I'm using economy $8 a month hosting and the, the bandwidth that I was paying for was just to have like a blog, not to like download a gig or two gigs of zip files every time something, it was stupid. I had plugins, I had this, you had to create password protected pages and it didn't even work. I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about in 2010 when I started to sell my very first course called Pro Tools Bootcamp, it was a $47 audio production course. Um, back then, People didn't know what an online video course was. To, like for years after launching that course, people thought I was selling DVDs. They're like, so when do you mail me the DVDs? I'm like, no, there's no, there's, there's no discs. I'm not gonna mail you something. When you, you buy this program, you're buying access to these videos that you'll be able to download and watch them instantaneously and take action on them. They were so confused and they were very like hesitant and reticent to give me their credit card for something that they weren't actually going to get physically. They're like, I don't get anything. I'm like, you get 20 years of knowledge. You get a college degree of like, I've done this. Like you're getting my brain and all the time I put into curating and organizing all of my experience and knowledge into a five hour video training, they just didn't understand it. So I had to like have graphics showing like videos on, on, a, on an iPad. Like again, I didn't even have Canva. So I'm having to use like Photoshop and I sucked at it. Um, I'm trying to use visuals and be very clear on my communication on my sales page of what they were actually getting. It seems laughable to think about how hard I had to work to convince people to buy something that was intangible. Well, now people understand what a video course is. So it's a great format because you know people are late adopters. So video courses have been out for 20 plus years on the internet and now, now finally, 2024 is coming around and people finally understand what a video course is. When people understand the format, it's easier to sell. So I think people are just now getting hip to, okay, video course, got it. I can get a course on anything I wanna learn. So when people understand the format, that's great. So I think we're gonna be solid for the next 20, 30 years because people finally understand the format. We're not over the format. You might be over the format if you're an early adopter or you've been selling courses for a while, but you gotta think of the, the average person's gonna buy your program they, they're new to this. This is still a new, brave new world to them. It's, it's wild. Like when the pandemic happened, 2020 happened, it was like the first time people realized that there's online courses for sale. 
I was already a millionaire selling online courses when the p- pandemic hit, but it like it advanced our progress towards the, the average public understanding what an online course is. It made more course creators and more course buyers than ever before, and it's good for business. It's good for everybody, but now normal people get it. So it's a format people understand, and it's not going anywhere. Number two reasons why courses are here to stay and this is where we're starting to get into the nuance of the format of a course, is they are a one-time purchase. The user, the customer, prefers a one-time purchase. Can I get an amen? Think about yourself. It's been an interesting year economically. 2023 has been an interesting year. People have been nervous about their finances for a variety of reasons. Uh, They're still spending money. (laughs) They're still spending lots of money, but people are nervous. And what do people do when they get a little bit nervous about the finances, they cut back. What's the first thing we typically cut back on? Subscriptions. Anything that's a regular occurring monthly bill. We try to lower our bills, lower our subscriptions. So we're canceling Netflix or Disney Plus or Max or Paramount Plus or whatever, you know. We're canceling box subscriptions. We're canceling, you know, if we have auto ship on our favorite facial serum, like whatever it is, we're like, you know what? I'm gonna cancel subscriptions. The great thing about our online course, it's a one-time purchase. People are a little like nervous to sign up for a a membership or a recurring payment or a subscription, especially if they're unsure of the value they're gonna get from it. They're like, can I really commit to paying this person every month for something I don't even know if it works? Whereas a course, people understand, okay, the course costs $100 or it costs $500 or it's $1,000, but then whatever the price is, I know that's all I'll ever pay for it. So it's it's easier for them to, to, to understand the total price, it's an easier pill for them to swallow because then they can say, okay, this is what I'm paying and then I gotta see if the the value I get out of it is commiserate to the, the price I paid for it. It's just, it's simpler. It's simpler for them to understand. And I truly believe, no matter what you sell, and I do believe you should have a product suite with all kinds of products, including memberships and subscriptions and high ticket coaching we talked about a couple of weeks ago. Um, but I do believe that the first thing you should offer people or the core product you should have is a one-time purchase online course just for no other reason other than it's a one-time purchase. It's easier for people to do business with you when you're selling them a one-time purchase because you're not asking them to, to marry you. A subscription's a bit more like a marriage. It's like, hey, let's get, let's get committed. Let's sign up and, and we'll, let's do this every month. If somebody just found me online, like if this is your first episode of a show of mine or your first video experience of me and you're, someone recommended my video or you stumbled across my channel or whatever, do you really want to sign up to be my paid friend every month, like pay me every month? Like we barely know each other. That's why I think you should get, you're getting started with this video. Test me out. Apply this material. Get used to the way I think, the way I teach, you know, get to know me. And then maybe buy one thing. That's a one-time purchase. That could even include my book. Buy my book. It's 25 bucks. Buy my course. It's 500 bucks. Like buy something and that's it. And then then you have it forever. It's yours. It's not going to go away. And then you're not like committed to giving me any more money. It's an easier way to start the friendship, start the relationship, customer, you know, coach, client. It's just easier. Then once, like I know if you buy my book or you buy my course and you apply what you learn inside, you're gonna get results. You're gonna make gobs of money and you're gonna be like, oh, this works. And Graham knows what he's talking about and I trust him. Then it's a little bit easier to say, hey, why don't you join my community, right? And, and you pay every month, but you get all this stuff. You're like, I'm in. Because I I've tr- I I know what Graham's all about. I really believe the online course platform and it just being a one-time purchase is so good for your users to get them from a a viewer to a paid customer. And that's why it doesn't have to be a long course. It could be a mini course. doesn't matter. But just get them to become a paid customer by giving them a one-time purchase. They can wrap their mind around the price point and get value. Makes sense, right? All right, move on. Number three. Online courses are here to stay because, friend, they are more affordable than coaching. So there is, there's, I was literally talking to my bookkeeper about this because he does bookkeeping only for online course creators and, and content creators. And I was like, hey, man, what are you seeing, you know, trends right now? Like, it's a weird year. What are you seeing with all your clients? And he's saying, man, a lot of people are, are you know, moving towards more online coaching, more like one-on-one coaching and and you know, this personalized coaching experience. And we talked about this two weeks ago, high ticket coaching. I really believe you should have one-on-one coaching and group coaching as as 
one of your offerings. And so I understand the power and the value of one-on-one coaching, right? 100% agree. Um, And so I think there's a trend of like, you know what? People are tired of watching courses. They want interaction. They want customization. I don't disagree. But you know what? That costs more. It costs more. It It just does. Like I mentioned on the high ticket coaching episode, the best thing you could do is work with me one-on-one. It's $54,000 to work with me one-on-one. Okay, that might not be in your budget right now. It might be in your budget, but it might not be in your budget. How about a $500 course? It's one one-hundredth of the price. Okay, I, that's, that's great. Because you could take that one one-hundredth of the price 500 bucks, that's your investment. You do that course, you will go make tens if not hundreds of thousands of dollars easily. And then now you could afford my coaching and then we can really scale you up to seven figures and beyond. I don't disagree that coaching is more valuable than a one-on-one course, but it's just, it's not as affordable. An online course is way more affordable than coaching. So there will always, always be a need for your online course. It is the gateway for people to become your customer. And again, if you follow Pareto's principle, the 80-20 rule, you look at all the money you're going to make in your business. Let's say you make $100,000 a year in your business. 80% of it, so $80,000, is going to come from your top 20% of your customers. That's going to come from your high-ticket coaching. It's going to come from your mastermind. It's like the most of your money is going to come from a a small select, you know, offer or offers and a small select group of people. But 80% of your customers are going to be buying your lowest price thing and make up the $20,000 of your 100000 or the 20%. So your online course isn't going to be the thing that makes you the most money, I don't think. It will be a huge part of your revenue, but if you build out your business right, it's not going to make you the most money. But it's going to give you predictable revenue. It's going to give you consistent revenue if you have it in a funnel as an evergreen course, which is a whole other thing. Like, don't focus on launches. Focus on evergreen because that's how you get predictable revenue. I've got a lot of content on the channel here and on the podcast here about evergreen versus launches. But you still want to have something for the 80% of your customers who want to pay you. They want to be a customer. They want more than your free stuff. You should give them something. I wouldn't want to only offer one-on-one coaching for $54,000. I like having a course that people can buy. I like having a book. I was excited to write my first book because my course is 500 bucks, but now if you want to learn a lot of the same stuff, you can buy it in a $25 book. It's pretty cool. Uh, And if you look at my numbers... Like I just got my latest royalty statement from my publisher. Um, I've sold 20,000 copies of my first book, How to Get Paid for What You Know. It's been out for about a year. I've sold 20,000 copies. That's amazing. That's more people than who've bought my course. When it makes sense, right? The largest number of your customers are going to generate the least amount of your money. I make way more money with one or two coaching clients than I do with 20,000 people buying my book. But I'm grateful to have something that those 20,000 people can buy. <clears throat> and then I've had, you know, 3,000 people buy my online courses for, for this brand. I've had 30 or 40,000 buy my Recording Revolution courses, but that, that's been around a lot longer. So you can sort of see, like, again, the most people are going to buy your least expensive thing. But that's great. It gives, I want to give them value for free. That's the most people. And then my paid stuff, I still want something that they can buy. So I think having an online course is great because it's an affordable option for people. Number four reason, and that's never going to go away. People are always going to need an affordable option. We can't all just move everything to a paid community or one-on-one coaching. Then nobody, it, it, it just, it's kind of just leaves off people that it's okay. It's just the free stuff or one-on-one coaching. If that's all you want to do, that's fine. But having an online course is going to really allow you to create a customer list and blow people's minds and give them value at scale uh, and make it affordable for them. Number four reason why online courses are here to stay. They are go at your own pace. Flexibility is the name of the game. Everybody wants to have a flexible life. They need flexibility. They're paying for flexibility. Um, there, there, there's a benefit to a live cohort style course where it's like, hey, sign up, and we're all going to go through this material in the in this six weeks together. Um, that is powerful. Don't get me wrong. I, I, I launched an, a program earlier this summer called YouTube Income Accelerator, and I, I launched it first as a three-day live cohort-style program. And so I took 50 people in as a beta, and I, and I, I, ca- I capped it at 50 because I wanted to do a lot of, 
like live teardowns of their YouTube channels and their lead magnets and, and, and it needed to be manageable for me. So I took 50 people through it. We worked together for three days in an intensive state and I helped people understand the power of YouTube to scale their business automatically and how to use YouTube the right way um, and how to attach it to your business. And even if it's tiny, especially if it's tiny, turn a tiny YouTube channel into an income generating machine in your business. So that was powerful. That was powerful. The problem with it is that like people had to show up at a certain time, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday to, to get to get it. Now, I recorded it and they could watch it later, but it's not the same. Um, and, and, and people had to move their schedule around. And hey, if and people will move their schedule around for the things they really care about. Won't you? I sure as heck will. Um, if the Today Show calls and says, Graham, we want you on the show tomorrow, be up, you know, New York City tomorrow morning. Um, you know, like, babe, can you take the kids to school tomorrow morning? I got to fly up to New York. I will, I will move my schedule around for things that I think are worth my time. Um, but there is something to be said about the, the on-demand, asynchronous, go-at-your-own-pace nature of an online video course. And in, in a landscape of busyness, distraction, people working multiple jobs, people having crazier lives, you can see why online courses have done so well because they, they are cheaper than you know, a semester at university. They are um, more personalized to the specific need. Like maybe I don't want a master's degree, like an MBA, a business and business administration. Maybe I just want to learn how to sell. <laughs> and it's just the one thing I want to learn from like maybe, and maybe they don't even teach that in, uh, if you get an MBA. I don't even know. I don't have an MBA. Uh, you don't need an MBA to become a millionaire in business, by the way. Um, but let's say that there's one, one class in your two-year MBA program that's all on like persuasive selling. If I just want to learn that, I don't want to spend two years getting an MBA. I just want to take the course. So there's, that's powerful. But then I don't want to have to go to university physically or online when the courses are happening live. Maybe that doesn't fit my schedule. I want to just own the material and be able to watch it whenever I have time. I might have time tonight. I might have time on Saturday. I might have time tomorrow afternoon. I might have time when I'm in the car and my spouse is driving and I can just like get on a hot spot and watch some of this thing. I, go at your own pace is so powerful. And people like that because there's something to be said about learning when you're in the best posture to learn, when you're rested, when you're eager to learn, when you're just in a good headspace, and that's different for different people. So that's never going to go out of style. Uh, and that, that really is a benefit to the sort of standalone go at your own pace course versus anything live where it's like you have to show up when it's showing up and you may not be ready for it. I love online courses for that. And, that's, and people love it too. That's why they buy them. And number five reason why online courses are here to stay, and this is probably the most powerful, is they are the fastest way to get someone results. Hey, we'll get back to the episode in just a moment, but I wanted to give you a gift for hanging out with me in today's episode. I want to give you access to a free on-demand video training to teach you how to build your first thousand dollars of passive income in just 30 minutes a day. This workshop is packed with not only the things you need to create passive income, but the order in which you need to create them, how they tie together, templates you can use for swipe copy, scripts you can use, the exact tools that are both free and cheap that you can implement and use today, including how to figure out what your profitable idea is if you haven't launched your business. I cover all of this. I pull back the curtain on my business model that I'm using right now while you're enjoying this episode and how I'm generating a million dollars a year plus in two businesses. It's all inside of this workshop and it's free. I want you to watch it because it is the business model I believe in. If you like what you'll see in this workshop, then you will know that what I'm teaching you has got substance and it's a good fit for you. So watch it, take notes and apply it and you can build an online passive income business off of a free video training. Just go to grahamcochran.com slash workshop. That's grahamcochran.com slash workshop workshop. Now back to the episode. Now I say that because unlike a community, unlike a mastermind, uh, even sometimes unlike one-on-one -on -one coaching, an online course that takes all this disparate information and 
codifies it and curates it and organizes it in a linear fashion and eliminates all the fluff and the unnecessary and just highlights the necessary, which is what a good online course should do. People buy it, they can jump in, and it's like, look, if you just do X, Y, and Z in this order, you're going to get this result. It is the fastest pathway for them to get to the result that they want. They don't have to come to some coaching calls. They don't have to sift through your back catalog of, of trainings. They don't have to cobble together their own curriculum out, out, out of three years of your, of your paid community. They don't have to come to your mastermind and sit through a few hot seats for other people and, and hope that they get some information. And don't mishear me. I, I do think the most powerful way to get the best results is one-on-one -on -one coaching and then a small group mastermind with hot seats second, uh, and then a paid community third, I think the fastest way to get quick results is an online video course because it's it's like it's like chapters of a book. Do this, then do this, do that. It gets right to the meat. It gets right to the meat. So people want results. That's what they're shopping for. And that's what your online course can give them. And look, it's easier to sell for you because you're like, look, with a community, I, I find my students struggle selling membership sites and communities because they're like they're selling you know we have live coaching calls and we have you know you get access to this training and you and you're going to come and get the community and we we do challenges and they're not really selling the right thing they're selling the experience or the vehicle and that's not what people care about they care about the result and it actually makes it harder for them to to get someone to convert because people are like but how do I know that those things give me the result if you have a course it's a lot simpler for you to sell you're like hey buy this course apply it this is the result you get that's what people want makes sense so people understand the format that's why they're not going any way away anytime soon they're a one-time purchase over subscriptions people are canceling subscriptions left and right they're more affordable than coaching they go at your own pace which people need in this kind of busy world they need flexibility and they're the fastest way to get someone results now if i've convinced you to keep selling online courses or to start selling online courses um the landscape has changed a little bit. And let's do this real briefly and we'll land the plane. Um, it used to be, and I know this because is what I did, like that you could film six videos, seven videos, put them up into a folder, zip it up, sell it. 50 bucks, 100 bucks, that was it. I had like a, a, a simple sales page that I made on iWeb on my Mac with a PayPal button. I was like, hey, here's what you get. Here's what it's called. Here's what I'll teach you. Here's the price. Um, and it worked, and people bought it, because there's nothing else like it. Uh, nowadays, it's very competitive. So here are three things that I've seen to help you stand out when you're selling an online course, but also the, the modern con consumer is looking for these three things in a course, because they're, they're more sophisticated than ever. Um, they know what's out there, and they know what they want, whereas before they kind of got what they got. You know, like we tell my kids, you know, you get what you get with dinner, you're like, if they don't like it, you get what you get. You don't throw a fit. That's what we've been saying since they were kid, little, little kids. Uh, and that was the way it was in the early 2000s. And in 2010, when I got started, it's like, look, this is what you get. Don't throw a fit. This is, this is what an online course is. It, I didn't, mine weren't even shot in HD. They were, it was janky. But it worked. They're happy. That doesn't work today. There's three things that, need, that your course needs. Um, here's one, one before that, like a, a precursor to that. Have some kind of, I didn't even put this in my notes, but have some kind of modern course platform. Like don't sell janky zip files like I did. Don't upload them to your website with like, um, you know, un unlisted YouTube videos. Like that's janky. Get Kajabi or any one of their competitors, right? Like have a, have a course platform so that when they buy, so you can sell it because Kajabi creates the sale pages. Uh, and then also B, so you can take credit cards, but then C, so that they have a, a modern user experience where they log in, they can see all the, the courses and products they bought from you. It's very clean. They can access it on mobile. Every, like give them a, a modern course platform. If you need something like Kajabi and you want to play with it, use my link, grahamcochran.com slash Kajabi. I'll link to it below as well. Um, but that's a no-brainer. Like there's so many options, whether you use Kajabi or something else, there's so many options today. But here are the three things that your course needs to sell in today's market. Number one, a clear and promised result or outcome. It blows my mind how many people will film an online course and it's probably a good online course and then they'll make a sales page and they'll try to sell it and when you look at it, and I know this because I'll review copy for clients or students sometimes, I'm like, 
you're talking a lot about the course, but you're skirting around the issue. You're skirting around the most important thing, which is what result, what transformation, what outcome will they get if they buy your course and apply what they learn inside of it? Like that should be at the very top of the page. That's what you're selling. That's what you're selling. The course is a vehicle. Nobody cares what the vehicle is. Think about this. Diet pills, liposuction, um, workouts, um, diets themselves, um, shake weights, things that zap your abs. I mean, all of these are vehicles for what? Losing weight and looking great. Nobody cares about, like, if they don't care if it's a drug I have to take, if it's a surgery I have to have, it's a product they strap to my belly, if it's a, a, a eating plan, if it's a workout plan, if it's intermittent fasting, if it's saunaing, if it's cold plunging. Nobody cares what the thing is. They care about what result does it get. And any one of those things could give you the same result. So your, your course and what you teach in it is just a vehicle. They don't care about the vehicle. They care about the destination. They care about the destination, right? So the most important thing you need to get clear on before you film your course, hopefully, but certainly after you've got it done and before you sell it is in one sentence, what is the clear promise of a transformation, a result, or an outcome? And don't get hung up on, well, I can't promise that. Yes, you can because you're promising if you buy this, watch all of it, and apply all of it, this is what's likely going to happen for you. That's the promise. Of course, most people, we've just talked about this, most people aren't going to watch all of what they buy, and even the ones that do it aren't going to actually apply what they watched. It's just the nature of it. So you, yeah, you can't promise what their specific outcome is gonna be because you, don't, you can't control what they're gonna do. But you can, can promise what the course can deliver when used properly right? So that's the most important thing. So for example, I'll just use a real example. I just finished a launch of my product, YouTube Income Accelerator. I mentioned it earlier that I taught it as a live cohort thing a few months ago. Well, after taking those 50 people through it, getting them some incredible results, learning kind of what part of the content they liked, I filmed the entire thing and turned it into an actual standalone go at your own pace course. We just finished up the launch um, this last week. And so that course the promise is how to build a six-figure income off of a tiny YouTube channel. I mean, it's pretty, it's, it's pretty simple. It's like I'm telling you that if you watch this course and apply this course, you'll be able to build a six-figure business off of a tiny YouTube channel. Whether you're starting your one for the first time or you already have a channel and it's not really making you any money, I'm going to help you turn that tiny channel into probably six figures or more. That's the promise. Clear promise, result, or outcome. Okay, number two thing, because, because again, there's so many courses and most people don't do this. It's just like, buy my course, you get 50 videos. It's all shot in HD. You get workbooks. Nobody cares. They care about the result that the course gives them. Number two, a clear framework or process. This is unique. Um, so you don't, have to, you don't have to be crazy here, but what I would suggest you do in general for your business whether you're coaching people one-on-one -on -one, or you have a course or even if you're, you're weekly free content is you probably have this already, but articulate and if you're, you want to go like pro, give it a name for your own unique process or framework. So what I mean by this is you might give people a result. Like I help people lose weight, let's say. You could do that. But do you have a framework or a process that you do that by that's unique to you? And maybe it's not unique to you, but it's your unique way of doing it because not everybody does this way. Like, so for example, you might help people lose weight and intermittent fasting is a huge part of it or plant-based eating is a huge part of it or walking is a huge part of it, whatever it could be, or cold plunging is a huge part of it. I would create a framework or process and know what that framework or process is. And you might have even multiple frameworks or processes and give them names. And then you mention this when you're selling your courses because now people are intrigued. 
buy my course, it's gonna help you get this result. And we do this by using this specific process. People are freaking obsessed and fascinated with process. Why? Because it shows that you've gone inside the black hole of figuring this thing out that they don't want to. You've, you've reverse engineered how to get the result and you're coming out of this black hole with the roadmap. And if you name it, people lose their junk when things have names because it seems more legit. It's the funniest thing. So for example, in this course, I just finished launching, right? YouTube Income Accelerator. There's, there's two, fra- there's lots of frameworks, but there's two main frameworks that I teach. One is what I call the YouTube income loop, right? The YouTube income loop. And I, sh- and I have a, a graphic for it and I show how YouTube is the center of this loop. And here's how you start to spend money off of YouTube with what I call the YouTube income loop. Just even saying that sounds cool. Whoa, what, what's, what is the YouTube income loop, right? What does that even mean? I want money spinning off of my YouTube videos. The other thing is I have my YouTube rapid growth roadmap and it's a four-step process. And like when I show this to people, they lose their minds because they're like, oh my gosh, he's, cause he, what have I done? I've taken the infinitely complex and the million questions you might have about YouTube and the algorithm and how do you get that to actually make money and, and apply to your business and blah, 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 blah. And I've, I've simplified it into this roadmap. It's got four steps. You do step one, two, three, and four. You put it all together, chef's kiss. You make money. So it's like people freaking lose their minds. So have at least one framework. And this could be the way you coach your people in general. Like I typically take people through these four steps. With the, like, so think about the result you give people and then ask yourself, what are the steps that typically someone has to go through in order to get that result and how many steps are there and can I give it a name? That would be even awesome if you can give it a name. But these are all things you mention when you're selling your course because it makes your stuff stand out because it seems like you've really, it creates thought leadership is what it is. It's like, wow, not only is she promising a result, but she's thought about the way to do this and she has a system and a process, which means she's, it actually doesn't mean anything because you could make one up, but it just sounds legit. But typically it means like you've done this enough to figure out sort of the grooves that are carved into the path. Like most people, this is the pathway and it's so well worn that I, I know the path. I have a process, I have a framework and I've given it a name. So a clear promise of result or outcome, a clear framework or process. And number three, access to you. And this is, I think the biggest change. Um, 15 years ago, 14 years ago, when I got started selling courses, you did not need to include any kind of access to you. It was just like, buy my course, watch the videos, and that's it. These days, because there's so much content out there, one of the things that's going to make your paid stuff stand out is a little bit more access to you, a little bit more proximity to you. So four, four clear ways that you can offer access, and I've done this, I've done all four of these. Um, and you need to think about the ones that are, you know, reasonable for you. Think about like if if a thousand people buy this every day, like, you know, like think, have long-term thinking, 10-year thinking. So make sure it can scale. Um, and, and also think about your other products because you're going to have other products that have even more proximity. So there's different ways to do it. But here are the four ways to create access. Number one is just simply having comments below the videos. So again, there's comments below my YouTube videos, but I can't respond to every comment. There's just so many comments. There's so many videos. But if you're a paying customer and you leave a comment, you're likely going to get a response from me because I, there's, there's fewer of you and I, I check that regularly and you're paying. And so I'm going to jump in there and interact with my paid customers. So they can leave comments like, hey, this is a great video, Graham. What, I have a question about this and then I can answer that question. That's access to me. And number two is a community. It's very easy to add a community to any product, whether it's through a Facebook group or something like that. But if you use Kajabi, they have an incredible community that they have baked in. Um, and if you've been with Kajabi for a long time and you thought the original community sucked, well, this one's a lot better. They, they acquired a whole company called Vibly, and they've now baked that into Kajabi as your community, and it works beautifully. And it has a mobile app. It's, it's amazing. And I'm running my communities on it. But you can inc- include a free community um, uh, when they, they join your course. And you can have different communities inside of Kajabi. It's one community product, but there's different access groups, but you can have unlimited ones of those. So obviously they buy the course, but then they can have a community of other people they can interact with and you can be in there. That's one way. You can offer live calls. You can say, look, the, I'm gonna do two live calls 
um, for everybody that buys the course this round, or I do a live call every month for everyone who's a, a member of this course, no matter where you're at, you can add live calls. Um, or fourth, you can add feedback. And this is something I sold for years. It made sense for the courses I sold where I was teaching musicians how to take their recordings that they've recorded at home and, and do the post-production, like mix them so they sound really professional. And if they bought a higher tier of my course, it included one mix feedback. So they would take a song, they would mix it, and they would send me an MP3, and I would promise to listen to it and give them feedback. Um, and I did this for years. And it, there wasn't too many. I would do a handful a day or a handful a week. Um, it took me a few minutes. I baked it into my work rhythm. And it, it's like, dude, some people would buy the course just for that. Because, like, I want Graham to listen to my song and give me f feedback. It's, like, a way to scale my, my personalization and coaching in, like, to a 10-minute bit of my time. It's pretty cool. So comments, community, calls, or feedback are, are four ways you can provide access. But I do think in today's day and age, your online course needs to have at least one of those um, forms of, of access to you to make it more valuable. And you can mention that in the sales page. Um, but it's, it's one way you're saying, hey, there's all my free students and they can take and take and take and enjoy it. But my paid clients, my paid students, not only are they getting my best material, curated, organized, all that good stuff, but they're coming, you're coming into the circle. And so now you're going to get access to me. Depending on what you purchase, you're going to get more and more and more access to me, right? A course is going to have the least amount of access. One-on-one -on -one coaching is going to have the most amount of access, and there's shades in between. But I do think in today's market, you do need to consider some form of access. Now, again, I won't go into details here, but I'll just say, like, don't, don't give away the farm with your online course because I see this all too often. Somebody sells an online course and like, I'm going to do live coaching calls for those people. I'm going to give them a pay. I'm going to give them a private community. And, um, and then what they functionally done is, is made it impossible to launch a membership site because now what's the difference between your course that has live calls in, in a community uh, and then this membership that's supposed to have live calls in a community. So this is a, a personal decision, but I've, I've personally chosen to not include community or live calls in my courses because I want to save them for a different product that makes more sense. I want to have my product suite make sense and not have confusion in the product line. You can, you can unwind anything you've wound up. So like, don't worry if you, if you've already done something like that, you can, you can blow something up and change it. You have complete freedom to do whatever you want with your products, but just something to consider. That was a lot. Um, online courses are my favorite. Um, they are what set me free. That's how you get evergreen income. I mean, I, the, I, I love them. And I've, I've made so much money off of, off of online courses, and they've helped so many people. It's how I've probably helped the most number of people is to my online courses. Um, they're not going anywhere, friend. So don't listen to the naysayers. Just make sure you're making a good online course and make sure that you are implementing the three things we talked about and we're, and we're selling the right thing. Remember what people are buying for whatever you're selling. They're not buying you. They're not buying your time. They're not buying videos. They're not buying downloadables. They're not buying worksheets. They're buying transformation. Um, and at a high level, when you start to sell one-on-one -on -one coaching or some other high-ticket service, they're buying you know, application. They're buying you kind of doing it for them. But it's still all centered around a result or a transformation that they want. And that's what you're selling. And online courses are the best way, the best vehicle to reach the most people and get them quick results and scale your income as well. What about you? If you sell online courses, let me know in a comment below. Have you been stuck? Have you found that your sales are not doing as well as you'd like? Or are you having a lot of success selling online courses? Let me know in a comment below. And again, if you're listening to the audio version of this podcast, would you do me a favor and leave a review of the show. Really, really helps out a lot. Um, leave a rating, leave a review. Tell me what you love about the show, um, what kind of episodes you love and what you want to hear more of. I appreciate it. I hope you're having an amazing rest of your week. We'll see you in another episode real soon.